so in the early days of artificial images, uh, my classes, I like, I would often teach an X-ray prediction, um, and it kind of fell by the wayside over time. Um, I think part of that is because it's not possible to do in runway, and um, the setup is a little little frustrating. But um, I'm gonna walk through how to do this inside of Colab. And Colab actually, like, once this notebook is set up and running, it makes it fairly easy. Um, and of course, it's free through Colab. So um, let's walk through the first uh, steps of this notebook. Um, so this will cover just training, and then we'll see, uh, depending on how long this ends up being, um, whether we should also do the video generation. So um, the first thing to start with is I definitely recommend reading this um, excellent uh, Medium article. So this whole code repo that I've forked and I've made a couple little modifications to um, is based on um, JC Tested's uh, article here, and he also has a list of code. Um, I definitely recommend reading through this because this will explain a lot of like what's sort of going on behind the scenes, as well as some things that he does that I actually haven't really messed with around, um, I believe it's called scheduling, schedule sampling, yeah. So um, you can play with that as well, uh, but I definitely recommend checking this out. Um, one thing to note is that he is doing certain some things around how many filters he's using. This is to make it a little bit smaller. Um, I don't really recommend doing this. I've actually found that this sort of tends to like degrade the quality of the image a little bit. Um, plus, if you're on Colab Pro or just on Colab, you should be able to get something above um, 12 gigabytes as, as your uh, GPU. So hopefully that works. Um, so yeah, read that then come back here and start working on things. So um, I've already gone ahead and mounted Google Drive just because I hate going through that process, especially on video. But we have mounted Google Drive. Um, because I'm going to be training on this, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you save your training steps to Google Drive. It just it saves you a ton of like work about having to move things around off of Colab. Um, and also, if you're not on Colab Pro, uh, your hard drive or like your disk space will fill up very, very quickly. Um, these model files are very, very large, and I'll talk about how to maybe reduce the size of those or just work around it um, in just a minute. But your model files, like so every epoch or whatever, it generates a model file, and that is like about 800, I guess like 700 uh, megabytes, which means if you do that and this thing runs for 200 epochs, like that is going to be a, a lot of gigabytes of space. So just be aware of that. Um, that's why I usually use Google uh, Drive to, to save stuff out. And then I also have like a two terabyte drive uh, account. So if you are working off of a free drive account, you might run into issues. So just be aware of all that. Um, all right, so I'm already set up over here. You'll see inside of this folder um, my drive. Now, the way that this can work, um, if this is the very first time you're running this, I recommend running this top cell. This top cell is just going to create a folder inside of your Google Drive um, to basically store all of the Git code, um, as well as then where you save all of your uh, video frames, as well as all of your model files, that sort of thing. Um, this is why I generally recommend uh, having Drive set up, is that then you can save it, and you can always reopen it and reuse the same uh, code files, and that way you're not running through setting this up on Colab all the time. So I've already done this. Um, if you go into my Drive, you scroll through my many, many files, you'll see here there's already a folder called NFP Colab. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run the second cell. And the second cell just says, you know, I've restarted Colab. It says move into that folder. And then um, you don't need to do a git pull. Uh, everything should be pretty up to date, but I always leave that in there just in case. And then we're going to, inside of our server, we're just going to update uh, and add this dependency called dominate. I don't know exactly what it does, but I know it's required for this library. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and hit shift return. All right. So um, now you should be inside the code, the code folder, um, and you should be basically ready to go and get started. Uh, by generating a video. So the first thing you want to do is you want to upload a video. Um, we're going to need to turn that video into frames. Again, the way Next Frame Prediction works is that it splits, um, it basically does pair-to-pair -pair translation, but only from one, f uh, one frame to the next frame. So it's literally like looking at each frame. Um, so it goes from frame 0 to frame 1, frame 1 to frame 2, frame 2 to frame 3, and it sort of learns how it changes over time. So what we're going to need to do is first give it a video, and then we're going to separate that video into a number of frames, and then we are going to train using those frames. So I have a video here. It is a video of They're called cuttlefish. But they're like tiny water balloons filled with colored pigment. Um, so it doesn't matter if you have audio in it because it's going to get removed. Oh, I didn't realize there was going to be audio in this, but so sorry if you had to hear that. Um, so you're going to upload this to Colab. Now the length of video doesn't necessarily matter. Um, just know that like the longer your video is, the longer it's going to take to train. Um, although there's some trade-offs in that. Like 
basically the more frames there are, the more it's going to train per epoch. Um, so an epoch is essentially how many frames. It basically runs once over all the frames and learns that. And then it runs again for another second epoch on all the frames. So the longer your video is and the more frames that are in your video, uh, the longer that epoch will run. Now, the difference is that uh, if you want like a good quality or like sort of a nice quality, like the longer your video is, the less epochs you will need because it's learned, you know, a thousand frames versus a hundred frames. Um, so it kind of works out that like epochs aren't really a, as big of as or important as like knowing epochs related to your video length. Um, that may be a little bit confusing, but that's sort of what you need to know. Um, so now that we've got our video up here, what we need to do is we actually need to do, we run the, need to run this command called extract frames. Um, and if you just come over here and you copy your path, you're going to copy your path into this video argument. So just paste this here. So this is pointing the video at this is the, the path of the video. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to give your project a name. Um, this is basically the name that becomes the data set folder. I always recommend using the like the exact same name as you go through all the steps here. Otherwise, it will get very, very confusing. So I'm just going to name this Cuttlefish1. This is also the length of, or this is the name of the video, so that way it like, maps in my brain. Um, don't change p to p dir, dir, dir. Uh, This is your pix to pix directory. You're already in that folder, so we're just going to say where we are. Um, if you've moved stuff around and you know what you're doing, maybe you want to edit this, but for this uh, demo, if you're following along, I don't recommend doing that. Next are uh, video height and width. Um, so one thing to note here is that my video is actually 1280 by 720, but because um, for pix to pix HD, the video and height or the width and height must be a multiple of 32. So 12 or 1280 divides evenly into 32. Um, it's 40, but 720 does not. So what we had to do is we actually have to do 32 times 23, and that turns out to be 736. So you can try getting a larger size, but I think on Colab GPUs, you're going to run into issues. You might be able to do like 1280 by 1280 square. That might work. Um, I can't really say for sure. But in general, this is about the size you're going to be able to run on a Colab machine. So. And also, this is like 1920 by 1080 scaled down. So um, this is probably about the size you'll work with. Um, if you do have other videos that are other shapes, you can alter this size. Uh, generally smaller than this, and it'll work fine. OK, so now we've got the setup. So we're going to run this cell. And all this is doing is it's processing that video and extracting all of the frames. Yep, so we're done here. So now what I should be able to do is I should be able to go into my drive folder and I should go into nfp-colab. And you'll see here that inside of my data sets folder, there is now a folder called cuttlefish1. If I look in here, there's test frames and train frames. Um, and the only thing you really want to think about here is just making sure that like you have a decent amount of train frames. So I tend to find like a video of five or six seconds will, will pretty much be fine. Um, 150 frames isn't a lot, but it's fine. It's enough. Um, basically, what I recommend do for, for a short video like this is train it for 200 epochs all the way through, whereas for other videos that are longer, you might not need to go all, all 200 epochs. OK, so uh, this is now running, or we've, we've now extracted our frames. Um, so next thing we need to do is actually need to start our training. So there's two things to know here. One is if you're just starting a training from scratch, um, this is the cell to run. If you're picking up, like, say, you know, if you're on regular collab and after 10 minutes or 10 hours it stopped training and you want to come back and restart it, you're going to use this cell. All that is the difference here is that there's this continue train thing, um, thing, this continue train argument at the end of uh, the cell, and that just says to pick up from wherever we were starting before. Now, that the only way this is actually going to work is if your name, if the name matches a folder that it finds um, inside of your repo. Um, it's going to pick up that and then find the latest file and then train off that. So just be aware of that. Um, so we're just going to start from scratch. So um, we're going to use this initial training folder. Uh, the two important things to know here are the name. So again, I generally recommend using the same name as you use up here. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. I'm going to use name cuttlefish1. And then um, your data root. So this is that data sets folder. So again, um, that was in here inside of data sets and it is cuttlefish one so this is local pathing so this is saying the folder i'm in which is this folder here and then data sets and then 
this, so you're gonna paste that in. Um, now, save epoch frequencies. So this is kind of one that if you wanna save some space, this is one you might edit. Um, this is how often the model gets saved out. So right now, this is gonna save after every epoch. So it's gonna run for 150 frames, train on it, save out the model. Run for another 150 frames, save out that model. Um, if you want to save yourself some space, you can change this to 5. Now, one thing I'll note here is that if you change the save epoch frequency to 1, um, there's a lot of variation in all of these models. So you will see a lot of differences between like the epoch seven, the 70th epoch and the 71st epoch. So you might lose a little bit of flexibility in terms of like getting different weirder results, um, but this will definitely save you some space, right? So this, is, this will save out every 5 epochs rather than every 1, which means if you're model file is 700 megabytes per file, um, you know, you'll save yourself like 2.8 gigs or something of space. So you might want to edit this um, if you are, if you know you're short on drive space. I'm going to leave this at one just so that we can sort of like pick up really easily wherever we left off. Um, so this is all set to go. You'll notice I've already commented out continue train. Um, sometimes I'm lazy and I leave that in and then I just run this file, this command again by just uncommenting that. Um, it's sort of up to you. So we're going to run this. Uh, now this, after I run this, it's going to take a long time to, uh, save, to like train this. Usually I find that it takes about 20 hours to save a video of this length. So that's one collab pro session for me. Um, if you're on regular collab, it might be two sessions. If you're training with a longer video, it might be even longer. Um, so needless to say, it's going to take a while. So what I recommend doing is just running this. Um, and then what we'll do is we obviously won't hang out for 20 hours. I'll just stop the video and I'll come back and I'll show you how to generate video with this, or I'll just come in and check and see how we're doing. Um, so with that, I'm going to run this. Now there is one thing to know. Um, sometimes when you start this up from the very beginning, you will get an error message that says something like it's at the top here, value error length. What that is usually, what that usually entails is that what is happening when you are looking for your training files that are on um, your Google Drive? Your Google Drive is like, it's, this doesn't really exist on your server, right? It's not moving two terabytes of files over to my Colab server. It's sort of just like giving a symbolic link. And then when it asks for them, it has to go through and, and grab all of those files, right? And so if you have a, a long video, like let's say you have a minute long video, um, that could be, you know, maybe 2,000 frames of video. Um, as it tries to grab those, uh, it, it times out. So what will usually happen is when you see an error message down here, it'll say something like, you know, um, ran out of, like, I guess what it, I put the error up here. Uh, it'll say value error length should return greater than zero. Um, all that means is that it, like, timed out trying to grab frames. What I recommend doing is just, like, it'll just error out and it'll just stop. Wait, like, two or three minutes um, for, like, uh, for the system to just sort of, like, basically what's happening is behind the scenes, Google Drive is, like, sending those files over to Colab. So if you wait two or three minutes, that process is still happening behind the scenes. And then you can rerun this cell. And what will happen is it'll just sort of like be like, okay, now I have all the files and it'll start picking up again. Um, that is definitely something that, I, that people have definitely said like happens to them. Um, and that has been my fix. Uh, and it generally works pretty well. Now, if you have like a 10 or 15 minute long video, uh, first I probably recommend cutting that down. Um, but even with that, it might take like 10 minutes for all the files to get streamed over to Colab. Um, so just be aware of that. So now this is run. Um, what you'll see here is all of the options are, are paste are like shown here. Um, now we didn't touch pretty much any of the, um, options, like most of the options that we edited, um, you know, all we edited were the name, the data root and the save epoch frequency. Um, so there are many, many more here, and I definitely recommend reading JC's article because some of those are options that you can use within this training step. I've personally found that I like pretty much everything set up the way it is, um, so this is just what I run. Uh, now this is going to start running. Um, it's going to create a directory. Um, it had to download uh, a VGG file. Um, this is just a model file that I believe it uses for its network. Um, so this is just running now. Uh, so I'm going to stop the video and then I'll open it back up and I'll, w once I've like trained a little bit and I can sort of show you what's happening with our training. Um, so I'll be back in a minute, um, which will be like 10 hours. Okay, I'm back and this has been training for a little while. And you'll see at each of these places we've got um, end of epoch. It'll say how long it's been training or how, how many... This, so this is 200 epochs total is how long it's training for. Um, at the end of each epoch, 
there is a length of how long it took and then there's some metrics here about you know loss functions and that sort of thing i tend to skip this stuff i mean i keep an eye on it but i know that particularly with next stream prediction like it's going to be pretty wild in the beginning so i don't really pay too much attention to it um so let's talk a little bit about what you see here so first off you're seeing how many iterations we've gone through so there's 150 frames 149 frames in in this data set so at the end of each epoch it's you know done 149 times how many epochs it is um, one thing that's helpful to see early on is the time it's taken so it looks like each epoch is taking pretty much almost 207 seconds or whatever um, so if we just do the math here, 207 divided by 60, so it's taking about three and a half minutes per uh, epoch. So if I multiply that times 200, 690 minutes. So 690 minutes by, by 60. So it's going to take about 11 and a half hours for this whole thing to train, um, give or take. So probably round up a little bit, say it's 12 hours. So that's good to know. Um, that means I can run this in, an, in a single Colab Pro session. Um, and that means I can sort of just let it go uh, all night, which is great. If you're on a regular Colab machine, you probably don't like this number because that means you know you just about make it to one session, but it doesn't. It's probably not going to actually last only one session. So you'll probably need to run a second session. Um, you'll want to use this continue training function. So basically, when Colab shuts down, you'll just restart the machine. You'll want to run um, this cell. So you mount your Google Drive. You will skip this cell and run this cell. Um, so basically, you want to just go back into that, um, into the into the folder you already created in your drive folder, and then you will skip extracting frames because you've already have frames for that video. And then what you will do is you'll take basically this function, or sorry, this uh, argument, um, that bash script. Yes, <laughs> finally get there. Um, and you'll basically just rerun this, except this time you'll turn on continue train. So make sure that your name matches and your data set direction matches, and that will basically uh, continue training. So basically it'll just pick up from wherever it ended. So if it ended at, I don't know, 150 epochs, it'll pick up from there. Now, one thing to note is that if you set this to five and say it trains for 133 epochs, it will pick up at 130. So you'll lose, you know, a couple minutes of whatever that training time is. Um, but that's just something to be aware of that, you know, it's based on how often it trains out. So just be aware of that. Um, this will work fine to pick up from. So you'll run this again and you'll pick up training until it's finished. Now, in some cases, 200 epochs isn't enough. Um, I would recommend just starting with that and maybe I'll record another video on how to like change that if we want to. Um, for next frame prediction, it's never going to be perfect or actually when it becomes perfect, that's kind of a a disappointing moment because all you've done is replicate the video you already have so because we're doing this for artistic purposes it's kind of good just to like have it be a little bit weird and wonky and i find 200 epochs will generally give you at least that um you could train longer it's not really worth it um or i don't find it particularly worth it um and yeah and so i think we'll stop the video here i'll do another video on just sharing images and video or sorry just sharing video for this one um because i think it's i'm trying not to make these like 30 minute uh, demos for everything. So I'll break this up into two sections. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that video. Um, I'll link to this collab notebook as well. So you can just pick up from there. Um, and if you have questions, drop a note in our YouTube channel or join us on Slack. Thanks.